A common feature of world languages is having words that can imitate not just sounds, simple onomatopoeia, but emotional states, textures, and other aspects of the human experience. These are so-called idiophones. These words are said to be iconic. That is, they have something of their meaning contained within their form. Much research has been done on African and East Asian languages with respect to these iconic words. Despite Turkish being a highly described language, and Turkish having an enormous inventory of these idiophones, no study has put their iconicity to the test. I tested iconicity in a particular way. If a word is iconic, then speakers of unrelated languages should be able to guess the word above chance. My study was inspired by my supervisor, Mark Dingemonser, and colleagues who conducted an idiophone guessability experiment using idiophones from five languages. Native Dutch speakers were asked to choose between two possible meanings per idiophone. The results supported a weak iconicity. That is, items were guessable above chance, but not hyper-guessable. As a follow-up to this study, I created an experiment using the survey software Qualtrics. This experiment consisted of 20 Turkish words from this iconic word class. The idiophones were presented in audio format and only played once. I presented the 142 participants with the real meaning of the iconic word, the opposite of this meaning, and then an unrelated meaning, and then that unrelated meaning's opposite. That is, take the Turkish word jar jar. This utterance expresses noisy chattering. Therefore, I gave participants the choice amongst the following meanings. Expresses a strong taste, expresses a mild taste, expresses noisy chattering, and expresses low murmuring. The order of the items was not consistent to avoid bias. Preliminary results suggest that some Turkish idiophones are highly guessable by native English speakers, whilst others are not so guessable. As you can see here, the idiophone Bangar Bangar was guessed correctly by the vast majority of participants. This was also true of Pat Pat. One finds words in English which both superficially resemble these items, but also have related meanings, bang and pat, respectively. Did my experiment accidentally tap into an iconic pattern shared by English and Turkish? Possibly. Not all items were so guessable, such as shipper shipper. Others, however, were largely guessable, but not by everyone, and despite not having any commonalities with an English word. What remains unclear is whether or not semantic opposites or completely unrelated meanings were favoured by those not choosing the correct option. More rigorous statistics are needed to complete my research. The trend, however, seems currently in favour of Turkish idiophones being largely guessable by native English speakers. This experiment looked at the guessability of Turkish idiophones by English speakers. Dingemonser et al. provides results in line with mine, but for Dutch speakers. This effectively relates to two Western European language speakers. To broaden the applicability of these results, more studies must be done with speakers from other languages, with and without large inventories of these iconic words, in order to truly paint a picture of the cognitive ecology of these words, how they fit into the diversity of human language, and what relation there is in the human mind between form and meaning. Whilst my results are still preliminary and require further attention, the gist is this. Not all idiophones are created equal. Thanks for your attention.